Okay, my friends, get ready. We are going to have a blast and new physics. Everybody's calling for new physics. They know nothing works. They're trying to force everything into the old physics, and they can't. Laser pulses travel faster than light without breaking laws of physics. Well, the laws of physics don't work. That's why. Here's one that just came out. What is the speed of light? Speed of light is the speed limit of the universe. Or is it? No, it's not. They know it isn't. Now they're just trying to figure a way out of it. Okay, my friends, I know this is going to sound terribly arrogant and uh, hard to believe, but they everybody agrees now we need new physics. Nothing is able to be explained. They can't even explain gravity. I'm serious. So we need new s physics. And what is the new physics we need? Let me show you what they want to see, which is the smallest particles that exist. And we have found them, and they can't. I know it sounds arrogant, but it's just the truth. Okay, my friends, in these huge particle colliders, they collide billions of particles, and they have found a, what they call a zoo of particles, and obviously because there's just a, a ton of debris. However, these are the smallest ones that they think they have found, a muon neutrino and electron neutrino, and that's exactly what I'm showing you here. The black ball is a muon, and the white showers is the electron showers. They start out both as a black and a white ball. All right, this is the complete sequence. As the light approaches the Venturi, it's just starting to flood in here. And it's backing up and backing up and backing up. And the more it backs up, the more it displays this particle nature. All right? And then over here, it just explodes because the Venturi will not allow the black part through. You see the white exploding all over here? It's going to squirt right through there because it, it can crush and squirt. The black is not squirtable. It's, it, it's in there. You can't see them because they're just behind the white. The white now has taken over the event. Now green is exactly the same particle. Photons are photons. That's the same particle right there. Only the green is much more intense and I can show you that as well. Okay, this shows you how different the green is from the red. The green concusses here, and because the red is fluffing things up, it slams into it, says, get out of the way, and it pushes all those red particles down. There's the red stream. Normally, you'd see it come on both sides. Well, the green is so powerful, it pushes out of the way. And then the green reconcusses. Now, here's something I want you to see. Rod's phone, and the one I have here, same, I have the exactly the same equipment Rod had. I, I, replicated his stuff here but his was so much superior to mine I just stopped <laughs> this was done by another guy I don't know what phone he had but you could see the pixelation here how these these little boxes are really boxy looking rods was just absolutely flawless and and the guy that did this Fabian Boulet he took Rod Warren's stuff and he he worked with it and made it really gorgeous looking like um like this here. Remember I showed you the photons? He has some software that can figure out what the intensity the pixelations are and, and turn them into energetic <coughs> you see what you're seeing. And all that is is what this is. You wouldn't see that. I didn't notice that at all that this is more glowy than that. But not even once you start thinking about it and looking at it you see it. These are just the same, they don't change. The black ones don't change. And that's the definition of dark energy. It doesn't absorb, it doesn't emit, it doesn't reflect. It's gravity though, and it's heavy as hell. And these are extremely light, and they are just burning. They just burn. And I've shown that with the atomic blast, burning the house, and then a second later the house just explodes. So, th I've shown everything over and over and over again, so I don't know how much more I can show it. Um, and this is the electron flood theory right there that's all it is it's the whole thing right there in one shooting match Bohr is no more this is the new model electron flood theory says it, it, serves, it solves every single interaction you point one interaction to me I'll, I can solve it because the muon and the electron are t tied together electron neutrinos and I call that an electron that's what we always would have considered an electron it's sparky it's static it's lightning it's electricity and it's what we always thought was just an electron but it's not it's it has the dipole nature and the dark matter and a muon 
attached to it. Now, back to back, two of them, when they're emitted from, from materials, they come out as a photon. And that's two of them back to back. That's a bouncer. This is a fuser. Goes right into you. This one goes bang. It bounces. Now, it depends on what the frequency of the light was that was coming in. Because there's a lot of different frequencies. It's not just red, blue, and green. So it depends on the frequency. And then it depends on what it hit, how hard it bounces back. If it hits something really solid, it's going to bounce back pretty quick. If it hits something mushy, it's going to go boing and come back slow. So that's how we know what the, what the material is that we're looking at, what's red and what's blue and what's green. That is impact value, basically, because you're shining the same light at all that same different colors. And you're seeing all these different colors come back. Why? Why for the same light and you see all those different colors? The reason is those colors are bouncy in a different a different amount of bounce. As <laughs> simple as that. Alright, so once again, you have the laser, you have the light accelerating, you have the light s splitting, so the dark matter goes around. This is is atomic vapor. It is so energetic, it's unbelievable. And it is apparently 207 times more energetic than it was before it became particleized into this muon and its electron neutrino components. And to f fuse back together, if we can put our devices in between the electron flood portion, which is just elect the electron neutrino flooding, and then before it can come back to its muon portion, the black matter, we run it through our devices, battery packs and motors and anything, lighting and anything. It's just going to be electricity at that point. And then you need some regulation devices and so forth. It's a very simple idea. Now, I want to make something 100% perfectly clear. I don't know if this will work or not. I say it will. Because I can see the increase in energy here. I'm, that's my estimation, and it will work. It'll only take a couple of weeks to figure this out at tops. Because it, really, all you have to do is get a solar collector here. And I don't care if it's top shelf now or anything. So, so long as it can collect a pretty good percentage, 20% would be, at least we could find out. Now, if the laser coming through here uses 5 watts, and we get anything more than 5 watts back out of here, that means we're in positive territory. That means it's free energy. Because we could take back the 5 watts and keep the laser going, and we may have 1 watt left over. That's not going to be too good. But let's say it did the 200 times. Let's say that was actually real. And we had 5 watts here, and we had 1,000 watts coming out of here, because that's 200 times 5. 1,000 watts is 200 times. It's not by twice, it's 200 times. So 5 watts, 1,000 watts. Even if we could get 10% back, that's 100 watts. And we're only using 5. So if we could take that 100, put the 5 back in, we got 95 watts free, continuously, just continuously. Whatever we want to use it for. It's just flooding out, just like a battery. 95 watt battery, another 95 watt. You have 10 of these in a row, you got 950 watts. You got 100 of them in a row, you got 9,500 watts. You know, now you're into the kilowatts. Now, you, and these things are dirt cheap. Again, I don't know if this will f physically work. I have people that are saying they're going to do these prototypes. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I don't get that closely involved. But I do know it's as simple as making a restriction device here that is so restrictive that only the white can squish its way through and the black cannot. And we, this happened just by accident. There was no big, big experimentation we did. Rod did this by accident. He was just putting posts, you know, pictures up, just, you know, having a good time. He, said, he likes doing this. He, he, enjoy, he enjoys this a lot. And, uh, and I, when I saw what he did, I knew what he did right away. And then we worked together for the last six, seven years. 
And uh, everything I, every time I saw something, he kept sending me over and over and over every day he pictures. I mean, he was just fabulous. And I mean, I loved it, trust me. It was unbelievable. Because every one of them would have a little bit different. And so I could pick the ones and choose exactly what I want. And I'd say, how did you do this? What did you do? And then I would get him to recreate it and see actually the wave coming forward. And when it hit here, and in instant, I mean, I have fronts of waves coming at us. Let me show you a couple of things. This, he, he spent so much time, and I can't even imagine. And I would ask him to do things. I said, I, this guy's never going to spend this much time. He did. He did. I can't thank him enough because I could never, ever, ever prove my electron flood theory without his, his work. And he's never made a penny. He probably never will make a penny. And that's not his motivation anyway. It's not my motivation. You know, he somebody should take care of him. He should get some some award or something for, you know, you can find something by accident. It's just as good as going out to search for it. It's even better, really, because you didn't spend probably trillions of dollars, seventy years of looking for these particles, and Rod just did it in his garage by accident for a couple hundred bucks. That's the way the cookie crumbles. All right, this is the total event. Pulse red laser. Pip, pip, pip. You can see it's accelerating right out of its wave. And the reason there is a wave in the first place is there's a particle back in here that's magnetic. So everything around it is magnetic. So as it goes through the air, anything that else has a magnetism, which everything does, 100% of every particle has magnetic particles, it pushes and shoves against them. And that is what forces the wave to concuss and the particle to spin out of here faster than the speed of light. That is acceleration. And that right there is concussion at the Venturi, and that is literally a subatomic nuclear explosion. It's smaller than an atom, it's light, but it is still fission and fusion, which is just nothing more than what an atomic bomb is. It fizzes and fuses and explodes all over the place. That's what we're doing right there, and we can harvest that energy, I believe. Okay, I'll be going through the development of this, but this is light, this is light accelerating, this is the concussion at the Venturi, that acceleration stream here is these particles right here. When they hit the Venturi up here, they divide it into those muons and um, electron neutrinos. You see it? There they are right there, the black and the white. They were stuck together, now that's fission, this is fusion. Right? This is exactly what they're looking for. Now, they've been 90 years trying to find these. There they are right there. And they're still not allowing this to be seen at any of these research facilities. I don't see how this can be missed. This is light. We didn't start with protons. We started with light and made them force through the Venturi. That's separation. That's fission and fusion. You see what they're saying right here? They're going to demonstrate the photons are polarized. Well, I showed you the black and white particles. Of, yes, absolutely they're polarized. And they're trying to prove this event and so forth. Listen to this. They just redesigned the Large Hadron Collider to do photon collisions, which I showed you we've done six, seven years ago, and have all the results they were hoping to get. I think probably the things that will happen in the next 10 to 20 years will start to push our understanding. They still don't understand the particles. They're going to give them a sudden another 20 years because we're entering the regime where the theory isn't as well understood. They're never, ever going to understand it until they get away from Bohr theory and go into the electron flood theory. That is no chance whatsoever they will ever be able to make the Bohr model work. And the other thing I want to make you perfectly understand, I don't know if this is going to work and make extra free energy, but if it does, it's a damn sight better than what we're doing right now. And they have never even broken even on their type of fusion. We have few fission and fusion. You can see it. All right, thank you. Have a sterling day. I love you all.